It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman here with our executive director here at Redeemer Radio, Cindy Black for Theology of the Body Thursday. Thanks for being here, Cindy. Happy to be here. Tomorrow, we are going to be playing some highlights from past episodes because I'll be on my way to a Steubenville Conference where I'll be speaking to a couple thousand teens. And one of the things they have me doing is the men's talk, which I've been giving this men's talk at these conferences for a long time. And they come up with a different approach to how it fits in with the theme and things. And one of the things that they're doing during both the men's and the women's session is talking about the idea of transgender, gender confusion, and it got me thinking a lot about you know what does it mean even to be a man or a woman, and kind of going back to a lot of these topics with theology of the body. And one of the things that I thought about starting with is doing a, a quick survey, and I, I plan on doing a little Google form where people could get out their phones and answer one question on a scale of one to ten: How manly are you? Or maybe how manly do you think you are or something like that. And I have no idea what the response is going to be, but I imagine a significant of men are going to be all over the board. Maybe it'll be some ones and twos, maybe you know fives and sixes. I have no idea. But then kind of irregardless of how they answer it, my question is, what are you evaluating that on? Exactly. How did you yeah. come up with that number? What What is your definition of manliness that you find yourself to be a seven or a three or a six? What, what are you comparing yourself against or to? And so I think it, it really gets to the question of what does it mean that God created us male and female? And one of the things that gets me is he doesn't create us, uh, when we look at the, the creation story, he doesn't create us black and white or tall and short. Or These are different things that are in our DNA and they're really have very little significance over who we are as human beings and hair color, eye color, any of those things that distinguish us from one another. But the fact that he created us male and female is significant. It's not just on the DNA level, it's on the chromosome level. And that combination of male and female coming together has the opportunity to produce life. Two different races <laughs> of men can't produce right. life. You know, two different hair colored of women can't produce right. life. It is the male and the female. And that, that's a, a totally different level than all the other kind of more superficial differences that we have. Absolutely. And we both watched a video that a pediatrician, Dr. Michelle Cretella, has on YouTube. And she points out that there's at least 6,500 genetic differences between males and females. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that it is, I mean, we are male or female from the start. Yeah, and the idea that we can downplay the fact that you're a male and a female, and not just stereotypes, because I think that's a whole another topic that we have addressed a little bit, but the actual who we are mm -hmm. as male and female and saying that that doesn't matter and you can be with whatever sex you want. Uh, and even we've talked with Dr. Ruse on this show, and he's also been on – the Dr. Doctor show, I just listened to that, it was a couple weeks ago, talks about there's no such thing as a sex change. You can't actually change your sex. You can't change that Y chromosome to an X, or you can't change your X chromosome to a Y. You can do body manipulations, you can do hormones and things like that to change the way you present yourself, maybe, but that still doesn't change. All you're doing is denying the sex that God gave you. Yes. The fact is, is that We've come, like, it's this whole, oh, what is the word for it? This whole ideology of acceptance that we wouldn't accept about other things with the human body. Yeah. That if somebody comes into their doctor and says, I'm the Messiah, mm -hmm. they would say, you're delusional. Mm -hmm. And they would refer you to a psychiatrist. But if a guy walks in and says, I'm a woman... Then they're ready to sign them up and do hormone repression and surgery and things like that. Yeah. So it's really an interesting and scary concept that we that as a culture we've kind of bought into this this reality. It's the insanity is seen as sane mm -hmm. when it comes to this matter. Well, and 
we definitely want everybody, regardless of what they're struggling with, to feel loved and accepted right. and to know that there's a place for them in our church and that we need them in the church and that God has created you for a reason and a purpose and whatever struggles you're going through are opportunities for you to grow in right. holiness. And maybe that's just a chance for you to depend more on God. But especially whenever we're looking at young people and starting treating them with hormone blockers or things like that, when studies have shown that there's a good chance that kids will outgrow this. And in the video that you mentioned, she talks about a particular case where there was a boy who was kind of presenting himself more as a, as a girl and wanted to be a girl and was playing with girl toys and with girls and talking to him and getting to know his situation. It turns out he had a younger sister who had special needs and the parents were showing the sister more attention because she just needed more attention and with her special needs. And he associated that with my parents love girls more than they love boys. So I want to be a girl. Well, after getting him some counseling and some help, he was able to realize the truth that mom and dad love both of us and, and you don't have to be a girl to be loved. And so that kind of confusion that could happen, well, if they had just immediately started putting him on, on hormone blockers and things like that, he could have a completely different Right. Future, right? It, yeah. One of confusion, and uh, as we've seen with statistics, you know, a lot of depression and unfortunately suicide mm -hmm. is really high with people that try to go through that operation or, or transgender in process. Some, in something that many in the medical field will say is that if you don't try to help somebody change their gender, that it, they'll be suicidal. But really what we're seeing is that even when they go through certain changes, like you said, you can suppress hormones and you can do surgery, but it doesn't change like your makeup. Mm -hmm. You're still a man or a woman. And so you continue on with that mental confusion. Yeah. So... I guess one of the questions for this is going back to the question of what does it mean to be a man or a woman besides the biological uh, reproductive difference? How do we exhibit masculinity and femininity besides that? I think we have to widen our understanding of masculinity and femininity and understand that just like the question that you're going to pose to the young man, mm -hmm. men, that if we're looking at like Hollywood standards or even like Western movie standards, it's going to be shoot them up kind of ideals for masculinity and the damsel in distress for women's identity. Mm -hmm. But really, it, there are as many ways of being male as there are men. Mm -hmm. There are as many ways of being female as there are women. Now, we, there are tendencies in that dispose us to certain traits, but that doesn't mean that just because somebody isn't strong in that particular trait that they're the wrong gender. Yeah. I mean, men tend to be stronger physically than women, mm -hmm. but there are women that could lift way more than I can. <laughs> Lots of them, actually. Uh, men tend to be faster, but there are women that could beat me in a foot race. But right. yeah, those stereotypes, and once we start falling into the trap of that stereotype, then when we don't fit the stereotype, then we start to question our particular sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just like with the nature of marriage, once we abandon the definition of it's one man and one woman, it opens mm -hmm. us for a lot of messy things pretty much anything goes it's similar with this i saw somebody post i think it was supposed to be a joke but it's a sad reality 30 year old man who identifies as a six-year-old wins little league game or something yeah and things like that if we start treating as reality whatever someone says that they are mm -hmm. the implications are just crazy yeah yeah, and it kind of comes down to caritas and veritate, the the charity and the truth. Like right. we need to love these people that are struggling, right. uh, anybody that has kind of gender confusion, but we do that by sharing the truth with them, that God mm -hmm. created them a certain way and we don't know why right. that they're struggling with their identity, but try to help them through that, not lie and say, 
yeah, you aren't actually a male or you aren't actually female. Let's give you some surgery or hormones to change that. And if you think about it, basically, that means they're saying you're a freak of nature. I mean, it's it isn't the loving approach. It's saying, yeah, something's wrong. You you know, something went wrong in your creation. Rather than saying, right. no, you are beautifully and wonderfully made as you are. Let's help you to realize that and recognize that. Yeah. So we'll definitely have a, a link to this video with the, the show notes for this, uh, so people can check that out. I thought it was very well presented mm-hmm. and a nice short little five-minute video. Uh, any other resources or suggestions for somebody that's maybe dealing with this uh, with their family? It seems like it keeps on growing in popularity and we know more and more people that might be struggling with this issue. Well, I would say be really careful about who we refer people to. Make mm-hmm. sure that it's somebody that understands that this is a body dysphoria and helps treat that underlying thing rather than saying, okay, as long as you can convince me with your thoughts and words that you should be the other, then we'll move in that direction. So making sure that you find good doctors and therapists that understand the human person and this sort of mental illness. And prayer and love, I'd say, are the other two big things. Yeah, one of the things she says is the organization that says that you should be careful about getting tattoos, especially at a young age, because this is permanent, will also be in full support of getting a double mastectomy at the age of 16, because that's that's a, that's a fine thing. Well, that's also a permanent know, thing yeah. you know, for, a, for a minor to be making that kind of a decision. And so, yeah, definitely keep these people, anybody that's struggling in our prayers and finding good resources, good doctors and therapists and counselors that can help walk through that with you yeah and i think also asking good questions just if some if a young person is exhibiting those things just asking them what's leading to that and being ready to step in and get them the help they need yeah all right well thank you again cindy for joining us for theology body thursday appreciate it absolutely